How to make your investment opportunity more appealing. So, uh, first of all, a little bit about myself, Ian Arden, uh, GP at Mample Ventures, which is a 25 plus million dollar fund. Um, have been in crypto since 2017 uh, as a CEO and co-founder of multiple venture building studios and service providers in the space. Uh, we have invested in 35 companies and have accelerated 15 projects over the years uh, with really good positive returns. So I think we know how to not only invest but exit investments uh, and profit uh, for, for our investors. Um, which turns to be like uh, also quite a rare skill nowadays, turns out. Um, so today we are discussing the, uh, uh, you know, the projects and how they can be, like make their investment uh, offers um, like more attractive for startups. Yeah, and I would like this to be a very like free fall conversation, starting with like wh what you think about like startups in the crypto space overall, how they pitch, the value proposition, what pisses you off and uh, any, any cases of startups that you are particularly admired of. But before anything else, can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit who you are? Hi guys, uh, my name is Faraj uh, and I'm a, a founder of Dow Fund uh, VC. This is a community VC out of uh, 1800 member crypto executives community. Uh, it's a community uh, with uh, 300 VCs. Uh, there are like uh, 1,200 projects, uh, centralized decentralized exchanges, uh, and we invested in a number of companies. I'm also a co-founder of uh, FD Capital, which is an investment firm, investing the traditional institutional money into uh, layer one and layer two protocols. Um, and also, I'm a co-founder of AVA cross-chain protocol. So I know both sides of the story uh, from the VC perspective, but also from the uh, startup perspective. So um, answering your question about um, uh, what kind of uh, things that are really uh, VCs dislike from the projects when they approach them. First of all, if, of course, um, unpreparedness. So whenever the project wants to, uh, to come and pitch the investors, uh, the first thing that the investors are looking for is that the project have prepared themselves both in, term of, in terms of uh, having a nice, hey man, uh, having a nice uh, pitch deck, uh, making a research about the, uh, the VC that they're interacting with, uh, making the research about their competition, uh, being ready for the answering the very standard questions that every VC is asking, uh, which they can Google. And, uh, and if they don't do their homework, the VCs would most likely decline just because of that particular factor. There are, of course, other factors that are uh, in the VC's mind uh, that they're looking through uh, before looking at the project. But uh, that one would be definitely a big red flag for the VC. Got it, thanks. Dusty, hi, how are you? Doing very well, thank you. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and then share what, uh, what you don't like about some of the projects that you've seen. We'll, we'll start from the negativity here. Uh, and then, yeah, we'll take it on. That. All right, so uh, yeah, I'm Jay, also known as Dusty BC. We uh, have a crypto YouTube channel, other finance brands, and uh, we invest in crypto startups. And so one of the things I like or dislike the most is that I hear the same speech over and over. And I also thought for this little panel that, that the main point I had to bring over is that whenever I get a, a call, the main point I get if we're talking metaverse or GameFi is this Unreal Engine 5 or, oh, we're creating a metaverse. No, but our metaverse is different. And it's basically the same pitch over and over and over instead of focusing more on what exactly is going to bring their specific metaverse or game that has an Unreal Engine 5 or the same USPs as many others to the, the mainstream. And so I think it's just the repetitiveness and the non-uniqueness of focusing on that USP, that specific detail that's gonna build that community. And I, I usually, when, I, when we're advising projects as well, we have like a, 
little discussion of what exactly differentiates you in being able to build the community that all these others weren't able to do. And so that's what I dislike the most, that there, it's a lot of the same stuff. Or a lot of the, let's go to metaverse because it's something trendy right now, even though a metaverse doesn't often make sense. Yeah, I, I can concur a lot. Like, I mean, uh, same here. Like, we are, we are seeing the projects that are basically like the copycats of the already successful solutions because the market in, in crypto overall is just so much like speculative and sentiment driven. Whereas uh, if something worked in the in the past, the other projects will just copy paste the entire thing about like without like thinking about like the, the roots of it. And uh, it's, it's putting off, it's just uh, making the overall IQ in the industry lower, right? Um, but, um, so at the country, have you guys seen any interesting projects recently? And uh, um, based on them and some particular examples on what the teams did well in their investment pitch and, and like the opportunity overall that you would like to really shape as an advice to almost every entrepreneur out there? Yeah, I think... Uh, of course, there are like there were a number of uh, projects that uh, like ki kind of catched my attention. Uh, one of them is, of course, uh, uh, one of the latest ones is the Roma Network. Uh, the guys, uh, the CEO is basically the, the head of development relationship at Polkadot. Uh, the CMO is uh, from Squid Network. So once you start seeing the team out of very established Web3 projects with really big uh, um, like kind of support from their previous experience and exits, uh, you kind of start having some trust. And usually the same people are having also the like nice pitch deck, they have nice tokenomics, they do not do the mistakes of other projects. So, um, and, and, and that actually like speaks for themselves. Sometimes uh, you are lucky to catch them very early before the big VCs come in, but because they know their worth, they're actually not trying to impress you super hard. They actually know the pain points really, really well. They, for example, that the Roman network is actually uh, making the Web3 of cloud computing in some way. They are competitors of a cash network and some others, uh, players in this field. And they actually like cite their competitors and they're talking about the competitors, which they're good at and, what, and, and what's they're weak at. So they have very, very um, strong sell point. Uh, and how they're gonna solve the, the real problem. So, and uh, we, for example, at AWA, uh, as a cross-chain solution, we also try to always pitch to the pain points of the cross-chain industry and uh, try to uh, show the prospective investors that uh, with, uh, uh, with the cross-chain um, uh, like layers increasing with time, or layer ones increasing in time, the cross-chain solutions would be more and more in demand and everyone would go for the decentralized solutions to avoid the centralization bridge hacks that we have seen like, like really like widespread in last year. So I would say that the projects should be focusing really well on, the, on their pitch decks, on what they're saying, and trying to like really explain the pain and explain that their solution is actually is a perfect solution for that pain. Thank you. You, Dusty? That, that was that was too good. I, I, I fully agree with you. It was really good. I, I, <laughs> that was really you hit the nail on the spot. That's I, I agree with that for the yeah completely. I, I I'd actually say it's very often the opposite where they focus on well it's an ex Google ex Facebook and they just focus on the story. Besides the tech, unless we're talking metaverse, where I see or gaming, where I see the Unreal Engine 5 too often, uh, but but depends on what type of tech we're talking about. I, I actually don't think they focus enough on tech, because we're seeing a lot of presentations here today, and when people are presenting, they're going, "This is how we do this. This is how it goes back and forth. This is the blockchain we use." But when you look at a mobile phone, you don't ever ask, "How does it go up to the space station and come back and make the call?" So I feel they sometimes go a bit overboard on tech when you were saying about the pitch deck and what that is great for people who want to take that deeper dive into tech, 
Should that relationship, when they're speaking to a VC the first time, should it be more on interaction? Should it be more on the pain points? Should it be more about what they're trying to develop and how they're trying to solve the current problem? Yeah, I, I, it's a great question. I, in my opinion, like the first interaction with VC, it could be not during the presentation call because it's usually the secondary um, interaction where the VC already knows about the project. They know uh, they must may have went through the pitch deck quickly and understood that like that it's interesting actually to have a call with and discuss with. So the when when the project meets the VC and the uh, in the conference or like somewhere, uh, they have to have this 30 seconds, one minute elevator pitch, which is basically who they are. Uh, like uh, usually the team, if they come from ex Facebook or some some big guys, they know what they're doing. In in general, most of them. Uh, sometimes not, but most of them they know, and uh, they know how actually to pitch as well. And uh, then they talk about the pain, and then they're talking about, oh, the next great thing that they're building. It catches the attention of the VC, because VC, like, at, at the end of the day, they're here to, to make money. And they want to get into the train that is leaving. So usually all the VCs want to come in and when A16Z and Pantera are already invested. So they would happily send the money, you know, in the, in the train that is leaving. But whenever you are just first to come to them, they will be very, very skeptical. So uh, it, it's, it's all about the founder's charisma and uh, knowledge and uh, experience to deliver this uh, sense of FOMO to the VC uh, that uh, actually they would really, really think that uh, this is a great project to invest in. My thoughts are sometimes it can be really good to share the tech and sometimes it's useless. So let's say it's the first interaction. It's not a good thing to talk too deep about tech, but it's good to give an introduction. But usually the people, they ask the questions about the tech when it's relevant. So I don't think it's too good to have it too upfront. You'd rather have them ask you more about it. As again, it's not what's going to bring you to the top of the top just because you have better tech. Doesn't mean you're going to get all the adoption all of a sudden. Because there's, even with Ethereum, for example, there's projects with potentially better tech. Doesn't mean they do better. And uh, they'll, they'll ask, I think. So do you have to have it upfront? No. Should it be somewhere? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, what I would like to see more often is uh, the, the founders who have the vision for long term, if they know where they want to get the world in five, ten years from now, and this picture sometimes may be unobvious, take ChatGPT for example. If you said anybody back in 2015 that AI will take over the jobs ten years from now, nobody would believe it, right? But uh, the true VCs are looking for uh, for the ideas and uh, visions that may take over the world just because nobody else or not many other people see it and, and will invest in it. Uh, on this note, I would love to thank you guys for participating. Um, the time is over. We are right on time. So good on you, and um, thanks for coming. Thank you for having thanks us.